In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a time reversal ability, where when you press a button, it's going to send everyone to the position they were at three seconds ago. So the very first thing we got to do is we need to detect when a player actually hits a key. Okay, so go to starter player, starter player script and make a local script. I'm going to call this time rewind keybind. And then I'll just say local UIS is equal to game get service user input service. So what this service does is it basically allows you to like monitor whenever, you know, players hit keys and like there's other stuff, but that's basically all it's used for. Okay. So you can say UIS input begin connect function. So whenever the player hits any single key, whenever any input begins, this will fire. Okay. Now this function does give you two um, items. It gives you the input. So like the actual key that was pressed and it gives you uh, this thing called a game processed event, which is a Boolean or a true or false value. So input, you can give it whatever name you want. I'll just call it imp for short. And then you can give processed whatever you want. I'll call it proc processed in short. If the player is doing something um, not in game. So let's say the player is using the chat, right? And then they hit a key. If the player is like using a chat and they aren't like, you know, playing the game, then game processed will be equal to true. So in short, if the game processed is equal to true, then the player is likely typing in chat. And so if the player is typing in chat, we don't want that to like trigger their ability, right? So we can say if proc, meaning if they are typing in chat, then return end, meaning just end the function completely. But if we're still going, then the player isn't typing in chat, the player is playing the game. And then we need to check if input, and input has different types. So we can get the input key code, enum user input type, or enum user input state. It all depends on what device you know you're making the game for, but use key code if you want to detect key binds on a keyboard, right? So if imp.keycode is equal to enum.keycode, enum is like value, right? So value.keycode, and then you could just pick out whichever key code you want. So I'll use T. So if, if the player presses T, then what I'll do is I'll just print out pressed T. Okay. So Let's see if this actually works. All right, so my character spawned in. If I press T, there we go. Press T, 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 T. The next thing I, uh, like, you know, I'm thinking we can do is actually make the script, which will be in charge of storing um, the positions of every single player. So the way I'm thinking we can do this is I'll just make a script inside server script service. Okay, like so. Time rewind script. And what I'm thinking I'll do is whenever a new player is added, okay? So game.players player added connect function, which will give us the player who just joined the game. Whenever a player joins the game, I want to give them an attribute, which in case you don't know what that is, attributes are basically like values that you can add to any single object. And so what I want to do is I want to add an attribute to the player and we can call this attribute like, like I'll show you an example, right? We can call it past position. The type could be a vector three and a vector three is how we store position, right? So I know it's a bit confusing, but like I'll, sh I'll show you how to use it in a bit. And so yeah, we can make a past position, which is going to be equal to an X, Y, and Z coordinate. And then we can just add, you know, an attribute like this to the player. And then every single time like the server updates, we will just update the position of every single player, okay, through this attribute. So local car is equal to player character, or in case the player's character hasn't loaded yet, we can do player dot character added um, wait. Okay. So either we get the character or we wait for the character like so. And then we can just say player, um, set attribute. So we'll actually add the attribute of, we'll call it like past position. You can call it whatever you want, but past position makes more sense. And then I want to set the value of this attribute to be equal to the value, um, or I guess the position of the player's character. Okay. So we can say car, wait for child, humanoid root part, which is a part that every single player has. It's like the main part, dot position, okay? So whenever a player joins the game, their past position attribute will be equal to their starting position. That makes sense, right? And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll make a function. Okay, so local function, and I'll call this update pause, like for position, right? And this function will take in a player, okay? Like so. So what I'm thinking of is uh, then right after this, so you know, the function isn't done, we haven't actually added anything in there, but I can say game uh, get service run service dot heartbeat connect function like so. So in short, this will run whenever the server updates, okay? Meaning it's gonna run every single frame of the server, every single tick. So it's, this is like the fastest way you can update anything in your game, okay? And what I'm thinking of is that when the 
um, whenever a new tick happens, right, whenever we want to update the positions of every player, we can just make a for loop, like so. So we're going to be looping through every single player in the game. And then we're just going to say update position. So we're going to call update position. And then we're going to give them the player. Okay. So I is going to be like the amount of times we've looped. And then V is equal to the player who we're currently looping through, uh, which in this case, yeah, we're going to give the update position function the player. We probably need to get that character again, right? So I'll just copy this line over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say local, actually, no, just local pause. Okay. Local position is equal to, uh, and I'll just copy this actually. So character wait for child human Edward Bart dot position. And because we want to make it so that uh, the, the player gets like teleported three seconds back, we're going to get the position, okay? And then we're going to do a wait. So we're going to wait for three seconds. And only then will we actually save uh, this position, which is now three seconds old, to the player's um, past position attribute, okay? So I'll just say player set attribute past position and we're going to set it to be equal to this position variable, like so, okay? And the other thing I'm thinking right now is if we're going to loop through every single player, the issue here is that when we call the function, it's going to be waiting for three seconds. So it's going to wait for three seconds and then move on to the next player, which isn't what we want. What I'm thinking we do is we have each function for every player run at the same time, okay? So we need to do something called multi-threading which I know sounds confusing, but in short, and then you just say task.spawn, you give it the name of the function, and then instead of giving it brackets, you just do a comma, and then you give it whatever value it needs. So in this case, it needs the player, or the V in this case, so I'll do V, okay? So this is just going to spawn a new function, which is going to be independent of the script, meaning all of the functions for every player can run at the same time, except for going in a straight line where, like, you know, we wait three seconds, and then all the other players have to wait three seconds and it's just going to be slow. So, you know, this, this fixes that. And we can actually play test this right now by saying, um, we can print the past position value of the player. Okay. So we can say print V again, because V is player here, V gets attribute past position. Okay. So every single time the game updates, it's going to print. Yeah. So right now it's nothing. So right now my current um, attribute is this, okay? There we go, okay, now it's changed. If I move right now, it's gonna stay on this for three more seconds and then it's gonna update. Let's see. There we go, yeah. So as you can see, it updated three seconds after. And the next thing we need to do is just whenever a player presses the keybind, uh, what we can do is we can fire a message to the server and just tell it like, okay, let's actually rewind everyone. Okay, and the way we do this is we make a remote event inside of replicated storage, call it something like, I don't know, time rewind event, like so. And then whenever the player presses T, we'll just say game replicated storage, wait for child, time rewind event, and we will fire to the server. Okay, and on the server script, we'll do the same game replicated storage, wait for child, time rewind event, but this time on server event, because here we're firing a message and here we're catching a message. So when we actually get the message from a local script, we're going to connect that. It's going to give us the player who fired. And then the only other thing I think we need to do is just loop through all the players again. So for IV in game, the hunt players get players. We are going to get their character. Okay. So do. So we're going to get the character. So local character is not player character, V. Okay. Because again, V is equal to the player. And once we have that, well, then we can just say character, uh, wait for child, humanoid root part dot position is equal to uh, V, because again, V is the player, get attribute past position. Okay. So what that should do is it should set their position to be equal to the value of their past position attribute. Okay. So I'm going to move away, and then I press T, and I'm back here. Okay. Oh, okay, it's lagging out a bit. Spazzing out, but it should be fine. If I jump... Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it sends me back uh, three seconds into the past. We're on the tower, then we jump off the tower, like so, and then we press T. As you can see, we get spawned back on the tower. However, if I were to jump off the tower and then 
keep walking for longer than three seconds, and then I press T. Well, now we're back to where we were three seconds ago, right? And again, if you want it to be longer or shorter than three seconds, just in the update position function, change the task.wait, okay? So instead of three seconds, you could do one second, you could do 10 seconds, you could do whatever. If the player only existed for, let's say, like, like less than this time, so let's say if you want the player to go back 20 seconds in time, but the player has, was only on the server like for 10 seconds, that's why that's why we've added the attribute um, in the beginning, right? So the player will just go back to their spawn position, okay? Instead of like causing an error. So this script accounts for basically everything. You should obviously check the comments for my wonderful course and wonderful Discord community where nothing bad happens ever. And we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.